Hey guys, welcome back. So in the previous lectures, we discussed about what are actually the types of webs and what are its constituents. So in this lecture, we are going to discuss about the most common myths related to the deep web and the dark web. So let's get started. So what are the most common myths about the deep web and the dark web? Let's see. The dark web and the deep webs are the same things. So yeah, we can definitely say that the dark web is a subset of the deep web. But we cannot say that both the deep and the dark webs are the same things because first point the deep web is totally unindexed whereas the dark web is indexed so the deep web requires some pay or credentials like an email and a password for instance password protected parts of the websites such as your email needs to be hidden so that nobody can google your email and have your inbox pop up right therefore certain pages need to be restricted from public access but we can say that the dark web is the part of the deep web but with extra layers of security of course the dark web's main purpose is to help criminals conduct illegal businesses. Due to the myths and misconceptions about the dark web, it is commonly categorized as the criminal part of the internet, where a huge group of criminals who conduct illegal businesses unchecked and without any fear. However, many people would be surprised to learn that the dark web has a larger and more important purpose. For those living under oppressive countries with restricted or controlled internet access, or for those who seek to be government whistleblowers, the dark web allows them to publish their thoughts and serve the internet freely. Since special browsers are used to access the dark web, such as Tor, hide the IP addresses of their users, journalists, whistleblowers, and the everyday person who simply wants to visit sites that are in their country, may be blocked or, or prohibited, can do so without any fear of punishment. And talking about the criminal side, Several government or private agencies like FBI's are keeping constant track of this illegal activities on the dark web. They are also monitoring certain suspicious websites and also have successfully banned many illegal services and websites. It's illegal to access the dark web. Yeah, if you were already on FBI watch list, then maybe you shouldn't go to the dark web. But for everyone else, it isn't at all illegal to go on the dark web if you keep in mind some few points. However, even if you simply view some illegal content on the dark web, keep in mind that you never know which websites the FBI is tracking. So although you might be okay if you visit some of the darknet content, you also might be exposing yourself to an undercover FBI sting. Tor only offers dark web service. While Tor has become synonymous with the dark web, there are other services that exist as additional layers of anonymized traffic. On the top of regular internet, Freenet, for one, was invented as a censorship-resistant publishing platform and uses peer-to-peer -peer communication and a distributed data store to store the network resources and make it browsable. Another, I2P, made famous for its reference in the Netflix show House of Cards, is another anonymity network that falls under the dark web definition. On the top of that, programmers have built another specific tools like OpenBazaar, a decentralized marketplace, much like Tor's famous Silk Road, that is unable to be taken down by the police due to its design. What is Silk Road? Well, it was a very famous drug selling website, we can say, on the darknet, which was recently shut down by the FBI. Everything on the darknet is bad or illegal. According to how it is portrayed in the media, the dark web is not solely dedicated to criminal or illegal activities. Therefore, however, a basis, on the basis of truth, it can be said that around 50% of the website hosted on the dark web, that is .onion websites, that is Tor URL suffix that signifies a Tor hidden service, are in some way linked to illegal goods and services. An idea for a secret network inaccessible to the regular users was received in the 1990s to provide US operatives with a secure and untraceable channel of communication. When the project was abandoned, researchers saw the potential for a completely anonymous network to grant freedom of speech and secure communications to political descendants in the opposite, re opposite regimes. Human rights and privacy activities Notoriously, Wikilinks hosted a Tor hidden service where whistleblowers can make anonymous submissions even the New York Times, Facebook, and the CIA have their own Tor hidden services. Recently, even the BBC has launched its dark web version, which makes the website available even in regions where 
they restrict censorship thank you guys that's it for this lecture in the next lecture we are going to discuss about the tor browser and how it works see you there thank you very much